Hello friends, and welcome back to another virtual story time with Miss Liz. Today, I thought it was important to read a book about celebrating our differences and the right that we all have to express ourselves in just the way we want to. Today's book is another book about indigenous peoples, specifically the Cree, who are a First Nations people from Canada. A long time ago, in the mid 1800s and all the way up to 1996, which is not very long ago, many children of Canada's First Nations were sent to residential schools. At these schools, the Canadian government and the churches wanted them to act and dress a certain way. They weren't always allowed to look or act or celebrate in the way that they were used to in their homes. They were forced to act in the way that the Canadian government and the churches wanted them to act. Some people call this cultural genocide. We're going to read a bit about what this means in today's story, which is called When We Were Alone. This book was written by David A. Robertson, Robertson and illustrated by Julie Flett, and it was published by Portage and Maine Press. Here we go. When We Were Alone by David Alexander Robertson and illustrated by Julie Flett. Now we are going to learn a couple new words in this story and the first two are on this page. Today, I helped my kukum, that means grandmother, in her flower garden. Look at that, so beautiful. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. See her beautiful dress? Nukum, now Nukum means my grandmother. So it's something family members use to talk to or about each other. Nukum, why do you wear so many colors, I asked. Nukum said, well, Nusissum, Nusissum means grandchild. And the grandmother started telling her story. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors. But at the school I went to, that's one of those residential schools where they made them act a different way. At the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colors, Nukum said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. See how all of the children are dressed the same? If they were at home in their Cree community, they would be dressing in colorful garments just the way that they wanted to. But sometimes, said Nukum, in the fall when we were alone and the leaves had turned to their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground. We would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us and we would be colorful again. And this, made us happy. Do you see the leaves? Almost like right now in Philadelphia and other parts of the world, the leaves are changing and they are very beautiful and colorful. Now, Nukem said, I always wear the most beautiful colors. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate and they reached all the way to the ground. When my kukum turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. See her braid right here? It was like she had a long tail. Nukum, why do you wear your hair so long? I asked. Nukum said, well, Nusissum. And now she's gonna tell the story of her hair. 
When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they cut off all our hair. Our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. And here in this photo, someone at the school is cutting this child's hair and their long braid is falling to the ground. Why did you have to wear your hair like that? I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Newcomb said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes in the spring when we were alone and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground. We would braid them into the short hair they had given us and we would have long hair again. And this made us happy. See the children braiding each other's hair with grass, making it long again? Now, Newcomb said, I always wear my hair very long. After my cuckum had fixed the latch to the gate, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle dress dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, Napanasis Michiso Tamaskitian Tamaskitian. Let me say that again. I had to practice this on YouTube before I read this book because it was a new language to me. This is the Cree language. Napanasis Michiso, Tamasakitian, Tamaskayasian. And that means, here little bird, eat and you will get big and strong. Napanesis, Michiso, Tamasakitian, Tamaskayasian. And her words sounded just like a poem. Newcomb, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Newcomb said, well, Nusissum. And here she'll tell us about her home language and the language they tried to make them use at school. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words. That's the English language. And we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language? I asked. They didn't like that we spoke our language, Newcomb said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. Here they are sitting in their classroom, learning a new language and not being able to use Cree or their other home languages. But sometimes in the summer, when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Newcomb said, I always speak my language. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my Kukum in the backyard. Her brother came over, that's her uncle, and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate banak. The tea was hot and sweet, and the banak was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My kukum and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nukum, why do you and Nukumis, that means my uncle, always spend time together, I asked. Newcomb said, well, Nusissum, and here she'll tell us the story about why it's so important to her to spend time with family. When we were your age, at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nukumis separated? I asked. They didn't like when we were with family, Nukum said, because when we were together, 
we thought too much of home. But sometimes in the winter, when we were alone and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts and in the crisp cold air, we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nukem said as she reached over and held my uncle's hand and mine, I am always with my family. And that, my friends, is the end. And here on the back page, you see the grandmother, the uncle, and the granddaughter all together holding hands and being with their family. I hope you all enjoyed reading this book with me and learning a little bit about the history of the First Nations in Canada. Again, this book is called When We Were Alone by David A. Robertson and illustrated by Julie Flett. Thank you all for joining me yet again for virtual story time. I will see you tomorrow for more great books. Thanks for watching.